We have had the iPhone 5 in the house for less than two hours, and over the objections of many in this building, we're starting our torture test. It's going in the freezer for two hours. Alrighty, good luck. Bye, little buddy. This feels even more wrong than usual. There have been several CNET rescue attempts, but we managed to keep the iPhone 5 in here for the full two hours. Let's see how it's doing. All right. The bigger screen shows the, oh, look how pretty the crystal pattern is. This is my favorite part. All right, let's see. It's nice and iced over. Oh, screen comes on no problem. Ugh. Perfectly responsive. Look at that. Little A6 processor, not phased at all by the cold. And look, actually, unlike the iPhone 4S, the cold did not drain the battery at all. It went in almost full, and it's still almost full. Our iPhone 5 came through the cold test with no problem. Let's see how it handles the heat test. A little change in the heat test. We've decided in the interest of all of that plastic very close to heat sources, we're gonna try wrapping these in a towel so that we get a lot of heat, but maybe not so much melting. All right, so we'll wrap it up. You may remember we did this with our iPad back in season one. Okay, let's put our little, look, it looks like kind of like bread dough. Two hundred degrees, one hour. Sounds like our iPhone is cooked. Let's make that stop. Okay. All right. And see how it's doing. Ugh. Okay. Extremely hot to the touch. Might as well try to turn it on. Oh, yep. We have our temperature warning. iPhone needs to cool down before you can use it. So that's such good feedback. So we will indeed let it cool down and then we'll try to use it. We let our iPhone 5 cool for about 15 minutes. It's a little warm to the touch, but otherwise seems fine. Let's see if our temperature warning is gone. Oh yeah, performance seems unaffected. Still is uh, crazy fast. All right, everything seems to be working just fine. Heat test, not a problem. Let's see what happens if, say, we're sitting outside and we accidentally shuffle puck it across the concrete. It happens. Now let's see how bad it got. <gasps> wow. I think even some of the glass is chipped right. Oh, yeah. Oh, I could actually get a little cut right here. You're going to need a case. iPhone 5 is already a little dinged up, but it is time for the drop test. Again, so light, so easy to just sort of lose track of while I'm at the playground. Oh no, a bee! Onto the concrete. We have some chipping on the front. We've actually cracked the glass on the back. It could have been already in a weakened condition, but that was only one drop. But. I think we need to keep dropping it. How about shoulder height? Okay, looks like no more problems. One more, ear height. If you only looked at it from the front, you would say this phone is amazing. It's this view that's the problem. Now let's see if the actual phone is still functional. It comes on. Looks like we don't have any screen damage like we did with the 4S. So the phone is still functional, but I think with a cracked back, we're gonna have to call this one a fail.
still functional after the drop despite the cracks. Let's see how the iPhone 5 handles water. Oh no, I dropped it in the toilet. Ah, this is the part where I overcome my fear of germs. The screen's still on, by the way. Very similar to our iPhone 4S. Bubbling. Probably get it out a little faster than that if you really dropped yours in the toilet. But This is one thing that's pretty amazing about the iPhone, actually. Both the 4S and the 5 now, really not very affected by water. The screen stays on. There's no evidence of immediate shorting. And that's with some pretty severe damage on the back that could let some water in. Just to be on the safe side, I'm going to power it all the way down, put it in our rice bag all the way off. Of course, I cannot take the back off or the battery out to make sure we really get drying on the insides, but it's not really acting like it has water on the inside. Check on you later. Let's see how our iPhone 5 did with the water test. We've had it in a bag of rice for about 36 hours. Just to be safe, now you remember it was on when it came out of the fish tank, but sometimes the water sinks in a little later. We did a little charging, but I don't know how it's doing. Oh, it's on. Screen seems perfectly responsive. It's doing its thing. That is pretty impressive. Just like the iPhone 4S, this one has no problem with a short dip in a pool, which is good news for a lot of you. Now, I do also want to revisit the drop test at the end when I was a little bit shocked by all the damage that we had caused by dropping this phone. I declared it a failure. But on second thought, I think I have to take that back. I mean, it's totally functional. If you put a case on the back, you'd still be perfectly happy to have it. So, on second thought, it's a pass. Overall, I'd say the iPhone 5 is very tough, but also not that tough. Compared to the Samsung Galaxy S3, which went through all the same tests, this obviously came out pretty damaged, and our S3 had no scratches at all. That said, any phone that can take a dunk and still come out working fine is one that you're gonna feel confident with. I would just say, get yourself a case. If you don't wanna get a case, this might not be the phone for you. And I do wanna issue a little bit of a warning because this is my personal phone, which I've now had for five days. And the front, the front glass is covered in scratches just from carrying it in my purse. If you are the kind of person who really prefers to have a phone without a case, I recommend thinking twice about iPhone 5. Although I am gonna take this one back to the store and see what they say.